Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Oh my God! emergency. What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops. Real crooks. Real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress. From impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. Sheriff John Bunnell. In the past year, we've been to police agencies across the country and around the world to bring you the most powerful and dramatic footage available. These agencies want you to know what they're facing in the fight against crime. So get set. Tonight, you're going to find out just how tough that fight is. Lancaster, California. Squealing tires, wailing sirens, and the thunder of chopper blades invade a peaceful high desert community. California Highway Patrol units are in pursuit. These are two suspected house burglars in the vehicle, and we also understand the vehicle may be stolen. Okay, he's going into a dead end street. I don't know where they're gonna go here. They continue off road. A frightened child playing on a bicycle scrambles to get out of the way. It appears that they've got an air compressor in the back, which is now being bounced around like a toy. Uh, it's a good thing there's not a person back there. Oh, okay, they're back on the street. They race toward an intersection. The light is red. They're gonna run this red, uh, there's a car there. Oh my God, they just got hit. T-bone accident, uh, unbelievable, they're still going. A pregnant woman never sees the oncoming thieves. She and her unborn child are all right. But officers realize that the suspects are now headed back toward the residential area. They have to shut these guys down and fast. Okay, suspects are gonna do a left turn here. CHP from behind. Oh, they pushed the truck from behind. Wait a minute, it didn't work. They got across anyway. A CHP unit tries to force the truck into a fishtail spin. The driver holds steady and somehow steers out of it. But the truck's left front tire is now damaged. It disintegrates and pieces of rubber go flying. Okay, he's turning right, he's turning right. He can't get any traction, he's going off the road. And he stalled, wait, wait. Okay, the, he seems to be stuck on some kind of a wire. Passenger foot bail, he's running. The truck is free. Oh, unbelievable, he jumped back into the moving truck. The truck gets caught on a support wire for the telephone pole. As the driver desperately tries to get free, his partner runs off, every man for himself. But as soon as the truck gets free, he gladly gets back on board. What he does next is unbelievable. Okay, he appears he's, he's reaching up into the passenger side door. He's standing, oh my God, he's actually trying to get back inside the truck. And he did, he did it, he's in. Knowing the stolen compressor could crush a limb, he carefully maneuvers back towards the cab at 65 miles an hour. It's amazing that these guys are able to keep going. That left front tire is just shredded. You can see it's just completely gone. Back on pavement, the suspects again head toward town. Knowing how vulnerable the truck is, officers waste no time trying to end this chase. The truck is hit again and it's still going. Here comes CHP. CHP, the tire is completely off now. They're pushing the truck sideways down the street. They are not gonna let these guys go. Wait, foot bail, foot bail. Same suspect, now running, running from the scene. Another unit speeds up to catch the fleeing suspect. The man leaps at the wall, hurling himself over. These officers are right behind him. Over the wall, suspect cutting through these yards. Another wall now, he's over that one. Here comes an officer. It's like an obstacle course. 
Okay, another wall. And okay, here's a plainclothes officer. Almost didn't make it. Suspect now behind a garage. There he is. Okay. Uh, he's still running, jumping over a wire. He falls. He's falling. Officer hung up on the wire fence. And he's given up. He's had enough. His face is now in the dirt. Spread Eagle, code four. This case is over. Both suspects are local, natives of this small desert town. But in one day's work, they managed to rack up some very big time charges, including burglary, grand theft auto, and felony hit and run. The chase lasted almost two hours. And though they risked their lives over and over, these homeboys didn't get too far. Ironically, they were captured less than three blocks from where this chase began. Armed robbery. It's every convenience store clerk's greatest fear. Some feel their only defense is to stay armed and ready. San Diego, California. Norman Mansour ran a convenience store for 18 years. His regular customers knew him as a mild-mannered shopkeeper, but he always carried a revolver on the job, just in case. One day, it saved his life. A customer approaches with a bottle of wine. When Mansour asks for ID, the customer's partner pulls out a gun. The crook shoots first, and Mansour grabs his snub-nosed 38. Mansour fires from cover, while the crook shoots blindly. The criminals run, never hitting Mansour with a single shot. That's one here, four behind me. The brave shopkeeper dodged nine rounds while firing five himself. Police recommend never fighting armed assailants. The loss of a few dollars is not worth risking your life. Not everyone who shoots it out with crooks is as lucky as Norman Mansour. Camden County, Georgia. Sheriff's vehicles pursue a two-bit car thief in a white Monte Carlo. But this chase will rewrite the book on high-speed pursuits. Yeah, I'm in a chase. A team of three deputies are right on his tail, ready to corral this runaway felon. Seen from another cruiser, the pursuit becomes a battle when the suspect uses his car as a fuel-injected weapon. Charging into the opposing lane, narrowly missing cars, screaming through the night at 110 miles an hour. As the chase reaches a road construction area, the deputies prepare to make their move. But what happens next is so unprecedented, they're shocked and amazed. What appears to be an unmarked police car jams itself into the pursuit. It is actually a second stolen car, acting as a wedge between the cops and the fleeing white sedan. Inside this brown caprice is the suspect's partner, determined to help his buddy get away. They were working together. He wasn't even expecting it. It was out of the blue. It's one of those unexpected things that happen. Metal meets metal as the deputy tries to ram him off the highway. The brown sedan is inches from skidding off the road. Incredibly, the driver yanks the car back under control, barely missing a traffic pylon. With the second thief running interference, his partner in the Monte Carlo has a real chance of getting away. The deputy has to take out the Caprice. That means putting his Crown Victoria against a vehicle so powerful and heavy, it is often used as a cop car. Again, chassis grind. But the plan backfires. I was banged up pretty good. I went careened off into the woods 250 some odd feet. This is what the deputy sees as his car hurdles off the road. Amazingly, the officer escapes major injury. I'm 10 I am 10 <laughs> Meanwhile, the other deputies are relentless, bearing down even harder on the fleeing vehicles. The suspect can't shake the cops and the speed is too much for him to handle. The Caprice rockets into a ditch throwing up a shower of rocks and dirt as it flips over and over and over. 
something again. It's amazing that this automotive cartwheeling leaves the suspect with nothing worse than bruises. Honor among thieves comes at a high price. In the chaos, the thief in the Monte Carlo gets away. But his partner will spend five years in jail, paying for his buddy's freedom. As for police, they are given a wild introduction to a new breed of chase, tag team pursuits. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. He's taking off again. A flaming riot rocks a London jail. Are you prepared to come down? A lunatic pursuit ends in a fiery finish as one tough cop gets mad. This is the wildest con slamming, brook ramming, car jamming action ever caught on tape. He's taking off again. It takes more than good driving to end a bad chase. It takes more than sweet talk and a bloody riot. And it takes desperate measures to end a nightmare. In Sumter County, South Carolina, Corporal Pat Riley's number one concern is making sure his peaceful southern town stays just that, peaceful. You try to prepare yourself every day you go out there, but you never know what's gonna happen. But on a seemingly average day in 1996, that piece was shattered. Call came out saying that it was a vehicle headed south on 15 North into the town of Sumter running vehicles off the road at a high rate of speed. He has no idea that behind the wheel of this white sedan, a mentally unstable man is in the throes of a psychotic episode. By the time Riley catches up, he can see the suspect is a menace to everyone on the road. The almost 1053 vehicle. Why would anyone risk so many lives, including his own? Even the suspect seems to have no idea. It appears to be a white male. He's putting his hands up in the air like he don't know what's going on. Well, at the time, we didn't know why he was driving, the, the speeds he was. We were traveling anywhere at the speeds at 100, 110 miles an hour. Corporal O'Reilly can only watch as the suspect repeatedly veers into oncoming traffic over and over again. He narrowly misses head-on collisions. Affirmative, affirmative, across the county line, about a half mile in. After so many brushes with death, any sane man would pull off the road. But this isn't a sane man. Another unit lays down a stop stick. The driver swerves around the spike, but he can't hold the road. Okay, he's 10 he's 10 Unbelievably, after three heart-stopping revolutions, the suspect regains control. Negative base back on the road. I thought it was over. I thought it was, and I was really astonished he was back on the road again. Again, the chase is on. 10-10, he got it back on the road. The driver avoids a second stop stick, but a third one takes out a tire. The units be advised he just went through another, another stick. Even with a flat, this suspect madly accelerates into the town center. For a moment, it looks like Corporal O'Reilly has lost the white vehicle. But he catches up, just as additional units join the pursuit. Negative. Next to this gas station is a daycare center. The cop in the lead sees the chase is headed toward the children and makes sure it goes no further. He crashed into an X-Rod. With no bystanders in the way, the officer has to make his move. But now the whole gas station is a bomb, waiting to go off. The first priority is evacuating the terrified children. But the driver remains in his car. Too deep in his own madness to even care about the flames engulfing his vehicle. Gas tanks are fire. Riley and the other cops now have to save the life of the same man they've been chasing for miles. They even brave explosions to rescue him. The cruiser bulldozes the car to safety. But there is still the threat of a massive explosion. 
Unbelievably, once the car rolls free, the suspect tries to keep running. He's taking off again. He had a reflex. I think he hit the accelerator and tried to speed away once again. But the police have learned to expect the unexpected with this guy. They quickly surround the car. The door handles are blistering hot from the flames. So they try more direct methods. Only 100 feet away, the flaming gas pumps remind the officers they're running out of time. Inside the car, the disturbed man struggles. He tries to yank Riley through the shattered window. It takes nearly a half a dozen cops to drag the man out of the car, and even more to cuff him. But finally, it's over. Top pursuit I've ever been in. I mean, it's uh, the longest, the most scariest, and I don't want to do another one like that. Police were able to halt this madman's rampage before it claimed a life. The driver later admitted to not remembering most of the chase. But Corporal Pat Riley will never forget the terror of this day which began with the wail of sirens and almost ended in a ball of fire. When faced with an angry mob, the police know that the threat of a jail term can help defuse a situation. But what happens when the rioters are already in prison? Strangeways Prison, Manchester, England. This gothic dungeon is the site of the longest, most destructive prison riot in modern history. Enraged by overcrowding and alleged mistreatment, over 300 inmates turned Sunday mass into a scene of mass destruction. After overpowering guards, many of the rioters take to the roof, taunting the police below. Inside, inmates begin the systematic destruction of the prison starting fires which quickly get out of control. Firefighters desperately try to battle the blaze, but the rioters rain debris down on them. Once the fires are extinguished, riot police move in, but the crazed prisoners are in a frenzy of destruction, and the officers are not their only target. The angry mob is turned against itself. Here they hold a sex offender at knife point threatening to hang him. And still, the police cannot risk a siege. There are simply too many rioters controlling too much of the prison. So they wait. We are at the moment uh, in a position where the containment uh, is secure. They have no idea how long the wait will last. For 24 days, the rioting prisoners refuse surrender, ignoring hunger and cold. Are you prepared to come down? While the rioters control the roof, officers move in to help the injured and reclaim the bottom floor. What they find inside is a landscape of destruction. A floor choked with rubble, cells blackened by fire, and catwalks ripped to shreds. It takes over three weeks to take the prison back and convince the rioters to surrender. By then, news of the strange way incident has touched off several copycat riots all over England. Millions of dollars in damages, hundreds of injuries, one guard, one prisoner dead. The physical evidence of this tragedy may eventually fade, but memories of savagery and chaos will forever make this the worst prison riot in modern history. Next on World's Wildest Police Videos, a brown bag bandit, a desperate felon, a terrifying game of high-speed chess. Plus murderous rage. He got their attention. Suicide seekers, shotgun standoffs, and the officers who risk a bullet to save a would-be killer. Bizarre crimes, brave cops, bold moves, brainless criminals. Be there. Got the tires on this side. Put your hands up here. Outsmarting crooks is their job. A bizarre bandit, a maniac on the highway, and a killer with a shotgun. The trick is to stay alive. 
while you protect and serve. There was a time when an officer in pursuit had to wait for a suspect to give up, crash, or run out of gas. But now law enforcement agencies are taking control, deciding when, where, and how to end the chase. This is where adrenaline meets precision. Des Moines, Iowa. In America's heartland, officers respond to a robbery at this gas station. Uh, copy that. Robbery in progress. Units en route. Nearby, two units spot a white sedan matching the suspect's vehicle. White 87 Taurus, 928 Charles Frank. But when the driver jumps off the freeway and runs, the cops know they've found their man. This guy is armed, he had weapons. Tearing through quiet neighborhoods, trying to shake the cops loose, the wanted man searches for open road. Suddenly, there's a cruiser ahead of the suspect. He goes left. Another unit blocks the fast lane, and the white sedan bails off the highway. As the suspect leads the cops up the ramp at 90 miles per hour, the lead unit moves in and tail spins him right off the road. It appears to be a sudden and violent end to this chase, but there's more here than meets the eye. There was a police car waiting at the top of the off-ramp, and this unit had the fast lane blocked. And only seconds earlier, the cruiser forced the sedan to the left. When we listen in on the police radio, it all adds up to a perfectly executed plan. First, the officers coordinate their operation. You want to close that off, we can shut off the freeway and box him in. This unit stops traffic. Public safety is the first concern. The, the next cruiser blocks the suspect, making the off-ramp his best bet. He gets off here, we're gonna try taking and it's no coincidence, this squad car is there to make sure the sedan can't double back. Everybody back up behind the them, but take him out if they can. Take him out, take him out. Notice the lack of bystanders? That's because police have cleared the street. The police thought of every detail, and their plan worked to perfection. This runaway robber thought he was leading police on a wild ride. But these cops had every phase of this pursuit under control. Teamwork, technique, and surgical precision. When cops have it all working, crooks on the run don't stand a chance. With armed suspects, negotiation is the best option, and deadly force is a last resort. But it's the area in between where police make decisions which can cost or save lives. When we're dealing with a suspect with a weapon, we have to assume he may use it. They can be like a time bomb. You never know when they're going to go off. The tense police drama is being played out right now. A man armed with a shotgun is holding police at bay at the intersection of Union and Walden. Chief Tawaga, New York. News crews broadcast live as this disturbed man takes to the streets, armed with a shotgun. He hasn't fired his weapon yet, so police try to talk to him. Watch though, take the under us, watch though. Over 100 police officers are on the scene, including a SWAT team. Two negotiators are currently negotiating with the government. But the man isn't listening. Suspect not responding. Instead, he paces around like a caged tiger. He's completely on edge as he stalks towards the growing crowd. Get back, get back. Hold your fire, hold your fire. The TV reporter does her best to remain calm. The gunman is pretty much walking right toward us with his loaded shotgun here on you. One suspect, dozens of officers, hundreds of bystanders. Too many lives hang in the balance for the police to wait any longer. Permission to take him down. Permission granted. And when the police see their opening, they don't hesitate. We got him, we got him. 10-4, we copy, you got him. Two members of the SWAT team sneak up and use a bulldog tackle to end the threat. The man is quickly cuffed, transported, and booked, all without a single shot fired. Sometimes your plan works perfectly, everybody walks away. Sometimes it doesn't, 
and you're that much closer to using deadly force. Wilmington, Delaware. In an act of sheer insanity, this suspect has been taking pot shots at a state police barracks. His weapon of choice, a pump action 12 gauge. Officers try to negotiate, but this gunman is getting more unstable by the second. Again, it's time for action. This time, the plan fails. In a daring move, an officer lunges for the weapon and misses. He's in a precarious position, totally exposed and vulnerable. Suddenly, the suspect has service revolvers pointed at him from every direction. In a brief moment of sanity, the man surrenders. Code four, code four, suspect in custody, we got him. He got their attention quite rapidly after a while and then refused to drop his weapon. It's crazy. See it for yourself. It's dramatic. The last thing a cop wants to have to do is, is kill somebody. Even if it's totally justified and in self-defense, it's still something you're going to have to live with the rest of your life. Columbus, Ohio. Local police find a man sitting in the middle of the road, holding a pistol to his own head. The man is suicidal, trying to goad the officers into killing him. It's called suicide by cop. Unlike most suicides, this gunman is a threat to the officers as well. At any moment, he could force the cops to shoot him by firing at them first. Marksmen take position on a nearby hill and wait for an order they hope will not be necessary. 501 to patrol. I, I've authorized the uh, officer to fire. But in this case, the suspect himself is not the prime target for the police snipers. From over 50 yards away, a sharpshooter's bullet blows the pistol right out of the man's hand. The suspect can't believe what's happened. Police don't give him a chance to recover his wits. This gunman thought the cops would assist him in his suicide scheme. Instead, all he got was a sore hand and a trip to the psych ward. In all three situations, officers easily could have taken the suspect's lives. Instead, these cops found non-lethal ways to take him down and then take them in. Universal City, Texas. The man entering this convenience store is very nervous. He's about to attempt his first robbery. He wanders into the store in full view of the security cameras. Moments later, he approaches the counter with a bag on his head. <laughs> A second security camera shows the clerk isn't sure whether the man's joking or not. The robber claims to have a gun, but his hands are empty. The clerk is almost as confused as the crook. The clerk tries a simple trick to fool the robber. I can't get into the register, sir. Playing with me now, ain't you? I'm not playing with you. This small boy is not impressed. He just wants to buy candy. You know, five cents, right? Yeah, five cents. The clerk is so baffled, he forgets his own story and opens the register for the boy. Be, uh, you got pay? The register's open. It's the robber's big chance to take the money and run. But faced with the moment of truth, he does nothing. The clerks decide to call the police. Hey, Claude. Yeah. Who wants our cash? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Call the cops. Call the cops. Maybe he's frightened of the police. Maybe he's frustrated by the lack of cooperation. For whatever reason, the bandit simply leaves. A few moments later, the stunned clerks and the astonished little boy follow him out. I guess so. When the clerks come back, they know they're supposed to do something. I guess we should have jumped him, huh? No, no, no. I did the right thing. I didn't know if you were serious or not, though. I guess on that bag over his head, he might. Was he drunk? No. 
The only thing that I saw that, you know, because, you know, you're supposed to check for scars and stuff, the only thing I saw was a bag over here. The clerks may not have seen his face, but the camera saw everything. This man's first robbery was also his last. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. From Moscow to Middle America. From teenage jerks to angry clerks. From roadside maniacs to the Russian mob. These crooks all know one thing. They're running fast, but they're going down. And when they go down, they're going down hard. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Turn left on foot. In South Carolina, cops cop an attitude. In Moscow, it's Russians crushing crime. Even clerks get in the swing of things. And another criminal bites the dust. Moscow, Russia, where the threat of hard time in some of the world's harshest prisons can't stem the exploding crime rate. But Russian police have a new weapon, a fleet of American muscle cars with powerful pursuit engines. Training on the job, the Russians add video cameras to complete their mobile anti-crime arsenal. Once in traffic, they spot a small European car. For no apparent reason, the driver suddenly speeds away. It's all the excuse Moscow cops need. In Russia, the police don't have to show probable cause. They can pull a car over for no reason at all. The suspect zips through traffic easily. The nimble little car is more maneuverable than the American cruisers. But the officers stay right on his tail. These cars are built for pursuit. And what they may lack in agility, they make up for in sheer power. The suspect continues his attempts to elude them, desperately trying to gain distance, even as more cops join the chase. Suddenly, the suspect blunders. He drives straight into the heart of city traffic. Surrounded by the powerful American vehicles, the suspect has no choice but to take to the curb. Still, this guy won't give up. He makes a run for it, but he doesn't get far. Inside the car, Police find a cache of illegal weapons. The driver has good reason to panic. The Russian Constitution has no Second Amendment. Only the police and the military have the right to bear arms. Caught on the wrong side of Russian law, less than 2% of suspects make bail. The wait for a trial can last up to four years. Once convicted, they can expect to stay in prison a very long time. Some criminals will target convenience stores because they figure it's easy money, that the clerk won't care, that he won't have any heart. But just because a guy makes minimum wage doesn't mean he won't have maximum courage. Toronto, Canada. On a slow night, this Canadian clerk is restocking his shelves. Maybe it's because he's been robbed before. Or maybe it's that these men are already carrying full grocery bags. Either way, the clerk is wary of them. What are they really shopping for? The clerk gets his answer when the men try to grab him. He squirms away. Both robbers rush behind the counter. They're so busy beating up the clerk, they barely notice a customer walking in. The men try to knock out the clerk under the counter, but this just makes the customer more curious. Shocked, the witness tries to walk out, hailing a passing car as he is chased out the door. The tall robber takes the money and tries to leave too, but the clerk won't let him go. Battling a man twice his size, the clerk scoops a vodka bottle off the floor. Now armed, the clerk goes on the attack, swinging the booze bottle like a hundred-proof billy club. Little David has his Goliath cowering by the time a police detective arrives on the scene. But how did that cop get there that fast? He was driving the car the customer flagged down. The cop has already arrested the other robber outside, and now he's ready to cuff this one, too. Adding insult to injury, the clerk makes sure he gets his payback in person. These bad luck bandits wanted a quick score, 
But thanks to a surprise guest, a feisty clerk, and a cop in the right place at the right time, they got a big headache and 23 months behind bars. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, Dangerous, Deadly, and Dumb. A South Carolina speeder is looking at a big mistake when he tries to outdrive the best in Chester. And a brave officer looks death in the eye when a gunman shoots point blank. I thought I'd been shot. It takes all kinds of fools to make a world. Cops deal with every single kind, every single day. There are some days when you smile, some days you run, or some days you wake up screaming. Chester, South Carolina. Local police pick up the pursuit of this stolen sedan. Be advised, we're coming into the city now. These teenage lovers have already been running for 60 miles. These rebels without a clue have knocked over guardrails and hit a church bus during this joyride gone bad. Now they're terrorizing Chester, racing through residential areas. Turn left on foot. Getting airborne over railroad tracks. He's in 50 there, bottom of Wiley, bottom of Wiley, white car. And forcing the cops onto the sidewalk to avoid a collision. The officers are determined to end it now. Right here, Scott. The lead unit races ahead and takes a heavy shot from the reckless teens. Then the second car sandwiches the suspects. Unbelievably, these young thieves keep going. The teens think they've taken the best that the cops can dish out. Not even close. Like a linebacker hitting a running back, the officer powers the car off the road. Within seconds, officers have the 17-year-old driver and his 16-year-old girlfriend in custody. They're sorry now, but they should have thought about that before they stole the car. This Romeo and Juliet turned into Bonnie and Clyde when they ran from the police. Let's see how long their love lasts when she's visiting him in prison. Cedar Hill, Texas. Officer Aaron Barnes finds what appears to be an abandoned car on a lonely access road. When I first approached the car, you know, I had my flashlight and I looked inside the car. I was expecting to find somebody in the car. And I checked the area. I didn't see anybody standing around the fence or anything. And so at that time, I got back in the car, advised dispatch what I had, that they've already exited the vehicle. Any strange situation can mean trouble. And Barnes calls for backup. I immediately asked for other units to come to the location because I thought that somebody was there parking in the dark possibly wanting to break into a car company that's just north of there. Returning to the suspicious vehicle, he finds someone seems to have appeared from thin air. I've got somebody in the vehicle now, stand by. At that time, I turned my headlights on, and then that's when the subject was back in the car, but he exited the car at that time when I showed up. What are you doing over there? Oh, uh, won't you put your hands on top of the hood for me? Put your hands on top of the car for me. I want to pat you down, make sure you ain't got any weapons or anything. But Patrick Dion Howard did have a weapon. What Officer Barnes doesn't know is that moments before, this suspect murdered a man while robbing him at gunpoint. I didn't know that he had just killed somebody because I wouldn't walk right up to him if he had just killed somebody. It had been a whole different scenario. I want you to put your hand right there, okay? Put your hands up here. Put your hands up here. Put your hands up here. Get out. Fortunately for Officer Barnes, 
backup arrives moments after the attack begins. The other officers chase the assailant into the night. He fired the gun at that time, and it was so close, the muzzle blast got me, I thought I'd been shot. The suspect takes a weapon from the car and fires. The bullet misses the officer by a fraction of an inch. I said, I can't take a headshot, I can't take a headshot. I'll take it in the chest. I'll take it in the chest, because I got a bad you know. Police found the suspect within hours. Patrick Dion Howard was convicted of both murder and attempted murder of a police officer. He was sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison. So still this day, I have not let my kids see the video. Um, because, you know, they're young. I've got, you know, at the time they was three and six, and their interpretation of my job, you know, is, Daddy, did you go out and catch a bad guy today? I knew this was on camera, and I didn't want my, my kids later on. My kids later on to see this. Officer Barnes kept his wits in a terrifying situation. The result was one killer down and one cop back on the beat. Next, on world's wildest police videos, too loaded to walk, too drunk to drive. These checkpoint Charlies still think they can beat the law. Wrong. DUI checkpoints are great weapons against drunk driving. But what happens when a suspect sees one coming and doesn't want to stop? Greensboro, North Carolina. An officer keeps watch on a distant DUI checkpoint. When a car stops before reaching it, the cop gets suspicious. The officer sees a man stagger out. He can tell this driver's not safe standing on his own two feet. He has to stop him before the man takes off. Get out of the car, now! He whips a crazy U-turn driving right over the median. Immediately, the cop gives chase. We're in pursuit. Call the DUI. Stand by. The suspect weaves recklessly through cars, flying by them at 80 miles an hour. Four about a mile away from Dutch Mill. Right behind him, he's all over the road. The drunk careens through a construction area. But he can't shake pursuing officers. The rough driving takes its toll. Smoke starts pouring from his car. Finally, the cop sees a chance to shut him down. Having no choice, the man stops. This chase is over. Pulling him out, the cops are furious. What's wrong with you, man? Are you stupid? You've got a felony. You've got a felony. All you're going to get was misdemeanors, you dumbass. From a misdemeanor to a felony, this guy should have stayed pulled over when he had a chance. Here we are in Burlington, North Carolina. Another driver has just sped away from a different DUI checkpoint. Spike strips have been set up, destroying his tires. Now sparks shower the road. Barreling down on his rims, he pushes ahead. He cuts through the median. He now heads the wrong way in opposite lanes of traffic. After passing the overhead bridge, the police converge on the felon. Finally, with his car completely disabled, he stops. He makes a feeble attempt at escaping. But like the other drunk driver, he's not going anywhere. These checkpoint Charlies took big gambles and lost. Now they're going to have to face their losses. In jail. Sometimes a police officer's job appears funny, foolish, and bizarre. That's the nature of police work. Sometimes it's tragic, sad, and brave. I thought I'd been shot. But the men and women who become police officers can count on one thing for sure. It is the most interesting job in the world.